This is a very, very human situation. <clears throat> from the beginning of our life, from the childhood onwards, we all face these type of situations in life, always. You know, like, um, you are playing, you are playing innocently, like a child, but your mother gives you a thrush. <laughs> You are stupid, you are wasting your time. The child doesn't know that he's wasting his time, but he gets the trash. Sometimes it so happens, the same child when he grows up, some children will be very grateful that mommy was very caring and looking after me. Some of the children will be so distressed, they'll be so disturbed inside, that they shall say, this mommy was a hard task master and you know, because of him only, only I am destroyed and all that, you know. When you grow up as a youngster, you do something which some people like, some people don't like. Your friends, your teachers, your acquaintances in the office, then you grow up, you go to the office, your world expands from your immediate family to the village or to that small little town, then to the friends in school, college, then you go into universities, then you take up a job, there's another expansion, professionals and friends and all that, then you get married, and that becomes a one, that's one person you marry, but that's your whole world. With the whole world, whatever they say makes no difference to you. But if your wife says something or your husband says something, it matters to you. Because now, as though you have given up the whole world for the sake of the person. Now, if the person doesn't approve what you do, or he's critical or she's critical, then you feel destroyed, devastated. So it's not something that somebody comes face to face or encounters this for the first time in life somewhere. First time you have already encountered it when you were a child. Because you have not taken something, they'll say you have taken it. You have not broken the pencil, they'll say you have broken the pencil. This fellow is naughty, he must have done that. <laughs> So these type of things goes on in life. But in case it so happens that is where comes the very, very, very important factor of life that is you as an individual must be aware of yourself. Because please see the principle. Whatever the people talk about, they can talk about what you have. See that principle. They can talk about what you have. Nobody can talk about who you are. With who you are, beyond reproach, beyond blame, beyond praise, this is beyond your appreciation of any kind. That is nice or not nice, good or not good. None of these type of uh, descriptions, attributes matter. So whatever people say, they say about what you have, one principle. Or whatever they talk about, talk about what you do. For average person, ordinary person growing up in life, these two things matter too much. In our society, have you not seen it? People respect you for what you have. 
not for who you are. If you have a fancy house, everybody looks at you. If you have a fancy car, if you have a nice dog, nice diamond, nice yacht, nice job, nice husband, a very powerful man, whether he's an athlete or academic, whatever. In any field you are done, you know, you are exceptionally well, you are done, you are an excellent person, you have excelled in your art or whatever field you have activity, and you are married to him or her, so they appreciate, oh, her husband, oh, his wife, oh, so his son, her father, you know, it's all what you have, think. The whole world is deluded by it. So much so, nobody thinks it is unnatural. So that is why people want to decorate themselves. What dress you have is more important what body you have. Because your body is not available for everybody. Your dress is available for everybody. Inside the dress you are ugly. Everything is false. Totally out of shape body, but somebody can dress you up so well. Why do you do that? Because you want to be appreciated by others, that they say, I'm a very nice, I'm a very handsome person, a very young looking person. But when you back to your own bedroom, you have to look at your body. You can't go through these fancy dress and go to sleep. Or look at yourself, you would look at your body. But how many people care for that? Same thing, the job that you have. The person is top cup, but the body is totally out of shape. Such a big stomach. Top politician, top activist, I mean, top anything, politician, professional, any, it just doesn't matter. But the body is out of shape. And not many people will also look at that because they look at your position. Because you are a fat, ugly person or you are a thin, ugly person, nobody can tell you anything because you are the managing director. <laughs> Napoleon was a short person. The General, the story goes like this, general tells him, Sir, I am higher than you. Higher than means, we, we French, English. What he really wanted to say, I am taller than you. But he said, I am higher than you. Then Napoleon corrects him. General, you are not higher than me, you are taller than me. Because he may be a small man, but the biggest, the emperor. So, what you have, what you have sometimes hides the ugliness that you are. Your physical body, just level by level, you see, physical body. But then, Just because you're a handsome person, it's like that uh, American movie. They show about the some of these criminals that a deliberate assassin. One person who who was a very handsome man, friends with the senators, governors, moving in the corridor of power but he was the one who was a serial killer. Deliberate Stranger, not an answer. The name of the movie is Deliberate Stranger. Very handsome person, but he's a killer. These people look at you, what you have. 
सेम वे आल्सो नॉट ओनली दे लुक एट यू थ्रू यू व्हाट यू हैव बट दे लुक एट यू थ्रू व्हाट यू डू सो पीपल ट्राई टू डू समथिंग व्हिच विल हाईलाइट देम बिल्ड अ टेंपल बिल्ड एन इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर द सोसाइटी ओपन ए मे बी डी ए मैन हैव ए नाइस ऑर्गेनिक फार्म एन आर्ट एग्जीबिशन म्यूजियम हॉस्पिटल बट इन लाइफ यू मे माफिया यू मेट हैव लुटेड चीटेड डिस्ट्रॉयड एवरीबॉडी लुक एट यू थ्रू वॉट यू डू सो इन दिस यू कैन सी very very important what you do what is done by you is seen by others what you have is seen by others but can anybody ever see your motive your thoughts your action is visible the actor the motive is invisible what you have is visible one who owns it using it he is not visible that is why who you are listen here who you are is much more important than what you do or what you have this is very very simple very beautiful who you are is more important than what you do or what you have why because first you must be before you do something right or wrong before you run first you must be no before you pick up a million dollar or a prize first you must be so before you have something you must be before you even have a thought you must be before you use your thought you must be before you have a faith you must be before you do something about your faith you must be are you getting that how subtle it becomes so who you are is very very important okay why people feel affected and why do we, why people think they can affect understand that principle people think they can affect you they can insult you they can humiliate you they can punish you the person also thinks he is humiliated he is punished he is denied he is disrespected he is not recognized do you know why because both do not know about themselves if i know who i am and therefore i know who you are then i'll also know i have a i have my memories my thoughts my emotions i have my body i have my these things so when you are talking about me since you don't know me as i am you will be talking about everything that i have so when you think you are humiliating me i know you are talking about something which i have so i will not be affected since i know it i will not also tell something thinking that i am going to affect you because if you are a wise person you will also not be affected that is where comes the very sincere genuine appreciation acceptance appreciation of everybody as they are i know i cannot humiliate you because i can only talk about something which you have and what you have is not you your land is not fertile that doesn't make you stupid Your house is not big that doesn't make you stupid 
Your body is not very shapely. That doesn't make you any way less than infinite and perfect. Your body is dying. That doesn't make you mortal. You have few thoughts or emotions. That doesn't make you free from every emotion, every thought. Consciousness, all pervasiveness. Ignorant person thinks he can affect because he feels affected when somebody comments about what he has. So he thinks he is going to affect others. Since he is affected, he can affect others same way. He is affected because somebody talks something about him. So he thinks by talking about the other person, he will also affect him. But there the equation fails. Are you getting that point? How fantastic it is. That is when you listen to these type of things, somebody praises you or vilify you, destroy you, talks very high of you or talks very low of you. He just doesn't make any difference. Why? Because that person is talking from his standpoint. And he's talking about something that you have and not you are. Your actions are interpreted, motives unseen. When you know for yourself, that who I am is flawless. Shivom, Shivom. Am I the only one? No, everybody is. Everybody is same thing. So there is no question of my being able to humiliate somebody. It's not possible. Therefore I don't waste my time. The ignorant person thinks since he feels humiliated, he can humiliate others. So he wastes his time trying to humiliate others. Trying to get up others. Trying to punish others. But a person who knows about himself, neither he feels humiliated, nor he humiliates anybody. Nor he feels affected, nor he attempts to affect anybody. Why? Instead of sharing the highest truth with you, why should I share some limitations with you? You understand? If I have to share something with you, what should I share? My pain? Your pain? My pleasures? Your little pleasures? Or shall I share with you the infinite, the absolute? Once you know how to share the infinite, the absolute, can you come down to the level of so-called hurting person or pleasing a person? You can't hurt somebody if the person knows himself. You can't please him also because he knows about himself. Sukhe dukhe same krutva. Lava labho jaya jo. Beautiful Bhagavad Gita it comes. You cannot escape comfortable situations of life. You can't escape. Even if you don't want, the climate will be beautiful. Even if you don't want, the climate will be horrible. Now it is a freezing winter. Now it will be a salubrious comfortable spring. Now there can be heavy rain. Now there can be nice summer. You can't escape. Same thing human beings also. They can be. They are like seasons. Some people, ignorant people are like seasons. They are continuously changing. They are continuously changing. Therefore, they can cause you comfort. They can cause you discomfort. But you are unaffected by both sukha dukhe same krutva. Somebody respects you, somebody helps you to do something. Very nice. Somebody is miserable and therefore tries to make you miserable. That also doesn't matter because in reality person cannot touch you. That is why if you say, how do I face it? The facing is not trying to remove everybody who tries to punish you or talk nonsense about you or, uh, you know, um, critical of you or uh, 
It just doesn't matter. Nor you try to surround yourself with flatterers. The fellows who tells you something wonderful, not because you, you are like that, but because they want to please you to do, get something from you. When you tell the rich man, you are so nice, your eyes are on his riches, not on him. When you say, oh king, you are so wonderful, your eyes are on his power because he may destroy you. So tell him that he is the best king in the world so that he doesn't destroy you. Everybody is playing games. You tell the girl or the boy, oh you are so handsome, you are so nice because you are thinking he or she will come to you. Suppose he or she completely dismisses you, what shall I say? Immediately you turn around, ugly fellow. <laughs> Think of it. So, should your image of yourself be dependent upon other people's estimation or description of you? Yeah, their estimation, their description shall emerge or stem from, come from their level of thinking. Since they are looking at themselves through what they have and if what they have is taken away from them, they feel destroyed and devastated. They think by taking away something from the person that he has or by tarnishing an image that the person has or by killing the horse that the person owns, stealing his diamond that the person owns, they are going to affect him. But when a person knows, even when everything goes, still you are shining as the sunlight. Even when the clouds come, you are still behind the cloud, you are still shining. Therefore, you don't care for the, what the other person, you don't care for means what, you don't give, take much notice of what the other person says. So it is not nice to be vengeful, to be punishing, what the person says. It's not nice because when you are angry, listen, first the anger kills you before it kills somebody else. When you are upset, first you go on reacting before it touches somebody else. It's not nice. You must be aware of yourself so that you are not uh, excited by somebody's flattery or appreciation, nor you are distressed by somebody's condemnation or criticism. You have to know about, about yourself, but do not underestimate or idealize that since you are a wonderful person, nobody will talk about anything to you, about you. No. People will do their job. <laughs> See, that's our habit. Suppose you don't say spring is beautiful, will the spring disappear? Or because the spring is beautiful, does the spring come? Naturalness of knowledge is like that. My wisdom is not because you appreciate, I am wise. Whether you appreciate or not. You are wisdom, not because I say so. You are wisdom, you are the absolute, you are Shivoham, you are the truth, you are immortal. Not because book says so, not because scripture says so, not because teacher says so. Spring is beautiful, not because poets write poetry on it. A flowing river is life-giving, not because a scientist talks about it. Everything is existing beautifully as it is because of their own self, own nature. So just because you go on singing a song, that does not mean the ice becomes warm. It will be cold. So what somebody says or doesn't say, it should not make any difference to you. And it will not make a difference to you only when you are aware of yourself. Simply advising, let the dogs bark at the moon. <laughs> The dogs can bark at the moon because moon doesn't recognize dogs barking. If you recognize somebody is barking at you, 
<laughs> you shall be affected. That is why when you are thus living in this world, is I mean, you must be totally aware of yourself, full commitment to yourself, which is universal. Even the person who is trying to target you, negate you, be critical of you, also is as divine as you. You can't uh, compromise on that. The person who is talking ill of me is a worst. No, he is as divine as you. Everything is as it. That is why in Puranas, Purana, in the myths, uh, mythological literature, you know, Puranas and all those things, when they read, eh, for children's sake it is talked about different levels. And the God, Rama suppose, kills a demon, the demon becomes one with God. So they want to be killed by the God. So that they become one with the God. Because they are one with God, they become one with the God. Are you getting that? So, in this uh, self-awareness, nobody is a stranger. Everybody is beautiful. So, and if somebody is talking about it, you know. It's not he talking, it's his ignorance talking. Therefore, you don't have to tell him, it's not you are talking, it's your ignorance is talking. You don't have to tell him, you won't understand. You won't understand. So the best thing is, you be yourself. Kuku is singing. Does it wait for appreciation? Oh, Kuku, you are singing so nicely, so you sing a little more. He sings, he stops. So you be yourself, which is absolutely changeless and same at all times. Your mind, his thoughts are changing, which should change. Your body is changing, which they should change. Sense organs are aging, they should age. You can't escape it. World is changing, they must change. Whereas you are changeless, the absolute. Suppose somebody say, hey, you old, uh, you know, dilapidated fellow, if you take yourself, if you look at yourself through the body, what shall you say? How can you give such a humility statement? I'm not old. Why are you complaining? He's talking about your body, which is maybe old, 30, 40 years, somebody 30 years also, the fellow can say old also. 60 years also old, 80 years also old, 5 years old, 10 years old. Eh? You are ageless. <coughs> If you are ageless, and you know you are ageless, will somebody's uh, statement of uh, telling old will uh, destroy you? Or because even when you are 90 year old, or 60 year old, or 40 year old, if somebody says, oh, you look only 10 year old, will you become 10 year old? Why fishing for compliment? And why try to avoid what the other person talking about? If that person finds some pleasure in doing so, let him do. Let him be happy. Why take away his happiness? <laughs> that is when somebody tries to be critical of you, you should not prevent. Why? Because don't deny him the pleasure. Poor thing has only one pleasure. And that pleasure is denouncing others. Don't deny him the pleasure. Let him be happy. Let her be happy for whatever they say or whatever they do. But you are settled in yourself and you can't afford to. It's impossible. It's impossible to talk bad about somebody when you are aware of yourself because you know you are not talking about him or her. You are talking about something that he has, what she has, what he does or what she does, not who he is. Who he is, divine, when that divinity, that consciousness, that reality is real for you. And therefore the whole universe is so beautiful. How are you going to ever look down upon that? Impossible, impossible, impossible. As even it is not 
possible for the ignorant to be so generous, it will be impossible for the wise man to be stingy. As impossible for the ignorant to give somebody happiness, it is impossible for the wise man who is happy with himself, giving any type of unhappiness, hurt, discomfort to anybody. Impossible. It's just not possible. Okay. So, be yourself. Not, why is he talking like that? Many times I've told in the class, no. What really affects you? What the other person says or how you react to it? What really affects you? That it rains or because you feel drenched and soaked and uh, feverish? Because you are healthy. You run and play in the rain. Jump into water. So it's not what other people say or do. It's how, much, how you react. That brings you pain, confusion, stress, the feeling of emptiness. These are all reactions. But when you don't react, what the other person says, you can't stop them from talking. Can you? There was a king. New city and the city had city gates, seven big gates. Morning it opens, so people get into the big city, and the evening they go away. It's a, like a fort, seven gates are there. People from all sides come in in the daytime, then evening they go away. One day, the guru, the king's preceptor. He came to see him. So, the Guru being Guru, for him everybody, he is a king for everybody, for Guru he is just a student, a nice man. He respects him as a king, gives his position, but then the king comes down to do Namaskar, uh, pay his respect, and then the Guru says, how everything, how is everything in your kingdom, everything is fine, are you fine? And he said, while coming to the kingdom, the gate, I met many people and uh, some of them were very critical of you. They were not talking anything very high of you, they were very critical of you. Then the king smiles and uh, tells the guru, O oh, revered sir, there are seven gates for this fortress. I am the king of this kingdom, I can order them all these seven goods to be closed in one moment. But I cannot stop, close the mouth, I can't order to close the mouth of everybody. <laughs> I can order the seven gates to be closed instantaneously, <laughs> but I can't close anybody's mouth. And what they will talk is from who they are. And they're looking at themselves through what they have. They shall compare themselves with other people through what they have. They'll be jealous if somebody is richer. They'll be happy if somebody is poorer. They'll be happy if somebody is uglier. Somebody will be jealous if somebody is a great achiever. They'll be jealous if somebody has more things than what they have. So, these people, you don't have to worry, you know, sort of. Right? That is why the best principle is knowing about yourselves. And uh, I've given you that example in that very class I was telling. When you're walking different surfaces, you'll be hot by the stone, the ice, thorn. So you don't cover the whole surface of the earth with leather. Cover your feet. 
You can change everybody. Impossible, impractical. You can't cover the whole surface with leather. Impossible. That much leather is not available. Impractical. Because you need different surfaces. So it's impossible to change everybody's mind. Also impractical. Because you need different types of mind. So change, just like covering your feet, understand yourself. When you understand yourself as to who you are, thereafter like wherever you, wherever you go, whatever the, uh, the feet is, the leather is there, you walk on the stone, you feel the softness of the leather. You walk on the ice, you feel the softness of the leather. You meet anybody encounter any situation, you feel the softness of your being, the truth, the fulfillment, freedom, the happiness, the love that you are. Okay?